Hello, Airbus Cockpit Coach here. In this video we're going to explore noise abatement departure procedures and how a pilot would implement those upon takeoff. These procedures are crucial to maintaining good relations to uh, the people living around a, a, an aerodrome, the communities that may be affected by uh, our flight operations. So it's uh, very important that uh, we, we adhere to these there are two commonly used procedures. The most common of the two is noise abatement departure procedure two and the other is noise abatement departure procedure one. Now I'm using Luton here as an example where we use noise abatement departure procedure two as a standard and if you want to find out where the information is it's pretty important that we review this and understand this information for the aerodromes you're operating at we get our airport briefing uh, page up and it's usually one of the first sections is the uh, procedures or noise abatement procedures. There's lots of information there. If it doesn't dictate to you that you need to use noise abatement departure procedure one, generally speaking it's uh, a default to two unless uh, there's some other procedures that you may need to follow. Some airports do have very specific procedures in and it, it will give you exact altitudes uh, to, to reduce thrust and accelerate and so forth, which we'll come on to in a moment. Uh, that's where you find the information. Uh, Luton does also have a diagram showing you uh, noise monitoring terminals around the aer aer aerodrome, so you can see where those are. The most common of the two procedures, as already mentioned, is uh, procedure two. And essentially, we control this by uh, coming down to the performance page. and looking at our thrust reduction and acceleration altitudes. So as a standard we would generally across you know, operate as a standard it's, it's 1500 feet is the baseline for thrust reduction and acceleration. This varies uh, between airline SOPs so uh, at the moment I'm using 1000 feet and then adding the aerodrome elevation to that so it's so today it's at 1,000 feet above aerodrome level. So we're at bring up your airport information page. You'll see usually the top uh, left side. You've got 527 feet, rounded up to 530, is uh, how we've reached uh, these figures here. Now on noise abatement departure procedure two, thrust reduction and acceleration are the same altitude. So in this case, 1,530 feet above aerodrome level. And we'll come on to procedure one uh, a little bit later on. If you want to set up your uh, default height, so you can do that within the Phoenix here. Bus reduction height and acceleration height. Um, so I've got a thousand in there today, but uh, you can have 1500, 800 or a thousand. So it does vary between airline for the SOPs, so, uh, it, but it can't be lower than 800 feet. So essentially we're going to climb up, reduce thrust and accelerate at that height. So let's run through that takeoff now and just see how that works out. We're all set up here for departure, we've done the checks. Take off. Antoga SRS Runway, Auto Thrust Blue. Hundred knots. B one, rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. So we'll follow the flight directors and we will track flaps on schedule. There we have, lever climb. So we passed 1530. Waiting for a positive speed trend, which we have. 
rust climb climb auto thrust and you'll see that the uh, flight directors then pitch our nose down we follow those and that allows the aircraft to accelerate We checks flaps up and we will continue to follow the departure routing now obviously it's very important to uh, adhere to the departure routing because that's going to take you away from noise sensitive conurbations around the airfield so let's look now at noise abatement departure procedure 1 so this procedure gives us a faster rate of climb up to uh, 3000 feet and so reduces our noise impact further to uh, a surrounding area. But it's used in more sensitive uh, locations. So thrust reduction remains the same so in this case I'm using a 1000 feet uh, baseline and adding aerodrome altitude again so it's 1530 feet and then the acceleration altitude is 3000 feet plus aerodrome level so 3530 so we put that in so thrust is reduced at the uh, the same height above the aerodrome but we delay until we accelerate so we're climbing up in B2 plus 10 knots so, uh, I'm saying in SRS mode up until uh, 3530 feet. So let's run through that now. Take off. And Toga SRS runway, auto thrust blue. One hundred knots. One rotate. Let's dip climb, gear up, nav. So we don't retract flaps straight away, we wait till our acceleration height is reached in order to do that. So we follow the flight directors. We'll get thrust reduction now, so we're getting lever climb, thrust climb, auto thrust. Following the flight directors up until 3530 feet. Coming up now. There we go, climb, and then you'll see that we're commanded to drop the nose now to uh, accelerate the aircraft. And at this point, we can uh, retract the flaps on schedule. Speed checks flaps up. And continue to flow with the uh, standard instrument departure route for, for noise abatement purposes. That's noise abatement departure procedure one. So it gets us up to a higher altitude at much faster than procedure two. The only time we would deviate from this would be in a uh, an emergency situation. Speed up star. Now we can get the autopilot on now. So. It's important to uh, also look at your standard instant departure route, adhering to speed limits uh, and making sure we are um, staying on that track. So these routes are designed to reduce the noise impact. So some of them you'll see zigzag all over the place and, and that's not just for traffic purposes uh, and it makes it easier for coming and performing an approach. It's uh, It really is to take into account the, uh, the communities around the airfield and uh, the, the noise impact. But you can see we've actually overshot here, so this this would be of concern potentially. So we, what we could have done here to uh, sort that out is actually uh, reduce our speed in the turn and keep us more in profile, and ensuring we're not uh, passing over any uh, noise sensitive areas. As I say, it's important to look at the documentation. You'll find a lot of it in the the general briefing part of uh, the charts. Uh, so do have a look at that. Make sure you're taking into account the uh, aerodrome altitude in those figures and check your uh, 
airline stops as well so they all vary a little bit so every airline is a little bit different and they do alter quite a lot so uh, from time to time they are adjusted that was the up and down um, so uh, just remember to check that information out but uh, as always in emergency um, you can deviate from uh, noise abatement procedures any questions on that uh, please drop them in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe appreciated thanks for watching and take care